we are going to be talking about our student leadership teams and maybe you guys have heard about them before maybe we've mentioned them or maybe you're in one last year um, our student leadership teams are called salt and light and this morning we are going to be talking about what those are like and how you can be involved but before we talk about that i want to talk to you guys about why we call them salt and light and where that comes from and i want to um just encourage all of you especially um, even those of you who don't want to join our student leadership teams how this can still affect you so I'm gonna pray and then we are gonna dive in boys over there if you could just keep it down um, all right bow your heads close your eyes dear Heavenly Father we just thank you just so much for who you are and God and we thank you for every single one of us that's here this morning I pray that you'd speak through me and that we would all learn something new God and that you would open our hearts to listen to what you have to say and I pray amen so before we uh, dive into this, I want to read you guys where we get this from the Bible. So if you have your Bibles, um, turn with me to Matthew. For Matthew is the first book in your New Testament, Matthew chapter 5. And if you are new to your Bible, I actually just told you where it is, right? I said that. It's the first book in the New Testament. Um, so flip past the Old Testament, and you'll see the New Testament, and then Matthew will be right there. Um, and then you're going to be in chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5. Five is not a prime number, is it? It is? What's a prime number? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> guys, 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 I haven't been in school for the past three years, okay? So I don't remember math things, okay? I can add a few things, okay? All right, is everybody in Matthew? Because I want to start because I'm feeling very insignificant right now, okay? So Matthew chapter 5, we're going to be in verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. It says, you are the what? Salt. salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Verse 14, you are the what? Light. light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So, for most of you, this is probably, what color is this in your Bible? Red. Red. What does that mean? Jesus said it. It means that Jesus is saying it. Last night, India said it means something very important, which is pretty much the same thing. But if it's red in your Bible, it means that Jesus is saying it. And so this is something that Jesus is asking us to do. And how many of you guys have chores that you have to do at home? How many of you don't, your parents don't make you do chores at all? <gasps> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I feel like we should make you do chores around here so you know what it feels like to do chores. So all, most of our parents, shh, most of our parents, unless we're abnormal, our parents make us do chores, right? They make us, shh, boys, they give us responsibility and they say, how many of your parents have ever said, because you're part of this family, you're going to do this, right? Our parents say that. Yes, as long as you live under my roof, you're going to follow my rules, right? And our parents say, these are the chores you need to do. And my parents, what they would always do is every time we would go out to dinner or out to like a party or out to see our friends or something, my parents would always say, they would say, white, the white family is always respectful. If we're going out, you guys are going to be respectful and listen to people. Um, and they would always tell us that before we went out to dinner. The white family is respectful. The white family is going to be kind and have good manners. What? My last name was White. Not, I'm not being racist or anything. Okay, calm down. All right, shh, keep it down, keep it down. Sorry. That was my previous last name before we got married, okay? So my parents would always say that before we went out to eat or before we went out to do something, okay? And they said as part of their family, that's how we needed to act. And I just always knew that growing up, that as part of my parents' family, that's what I needed to do. And a lot of us, we have chores that we need to do, and our parents ask us to be polite, and they say, as part of this family, you're going to be this way. 
And that's basically what God is telling us in this passage. He says, if you want to be a Christian, if you are a Christian, if you've accepted Christ into your life, you're part of God's family now. And as part of my family, I want you guys to be the salt and the light of the earth. And I think that sometimes it's hard for us to understand those things because we hear those words every day. But the first thing that I want you guys to understand, that first point there is that as Christians, we don't become salt and light, but we are salt and light. So we don't become it, but we are salt and light. So if we're Christians, if you've accepted Christ into your life and he's living inside of you, if you haven't, that's okay, there's still time. But if you have, then God says, as a Christian, this is not something you become. It's not a team that you join at church. It's not um, something that you just become, but it's something that you are. As a Christian, you are required to do this as part of God's family. He commands us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So I want to look at what that means because we have an obligation. Do you guys know what that means? Obligation? obligation. Yes, it's basically like a requirement or a duty. And God says, it is your obligation to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world because our world is falling apart. And we know that, right? We know our world is crazy. People are doing crazy things every day. Bad things are happening. Terrible things are happening. Um, all this new stuff is being created that's, and our world is just getting worse and worse, right? We see it every day on the news or we see it every day at school and people are getting worse. And so God says, as my children... This is your duty is to be the light, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And this is, as a Christian, this is what I require you to do and, because our world is falling apart. That is your job to keep, to, because our world is falling apart. So the first one I want to look at is the salt. And I'm going to read this passage one more time, this verse. Verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So, salt. We hear that word almost every day, right? What do we use it for? Food. food. What does it do to food? Someone said it adds value. I heard that because you were here last night. It makes it taste better, right? Everything, almost everything tastes better with salt. I, I heard last night that even watermelon tastes good with salt. Does it? I need to try that. So salt adds flavor to things, right? It makes food taste better. It makes it more enjoyable, right? And I like that picture because I feel like that's what God is asking us to do. He says, I want you guys to make things better, and I want you to add value to things around you. So he says, I want you guys to go out, and I want you to be the salt of the earth. I want you to make people's lives around you better and add more value to people's lives. And we do that by being good examples, by being loving to others, by, by obeying what God asks us to do. We can be the salt of the earth, and we can add value and flavor to other people's lives, right? And something else that salt does, which maybe you guys don't know this, but it actually is used to preserve things. And back in the old days when they didn't have refrigerators, they would, use, like their, their fish and their meat and all those things that would go bad, they would put salt all over them, and it would keep it healthy and yummy for a long time. And God says, I want you guys to be the salt of the earth. And he says, basically, that he wants us to preserve the earth. Because we know what's good, and God tells us what to do in order to be good examples, to be loving, to be kind, to be compassionate. And he wants us to be the good in the world. He wants us to preserve this world because our world is falling apart, right? We just talked about it. That our world is, people are going crazy. Things are falling apart. And God says, I want you guys to be the good in the world. I want you guys to preserve what is good and what is left. And I also want you to add flavor and add value to other people's lives around you. And so when God says, I want you to be the salt of the earth, that's what God is talking about. And he also says, if a salt loses its saltiness, how can it be salty again? And I think that this is interesting to me because sometimes I think we can be Christians, but we cannot be living that way and we cannot be spreading our saltiness around to the world, right? We can be like, oh, I'm a Christian, but I'm not going to spread that out around everyone. I'm not going to add value to people's lives. I'm not going to try and preserve this world. I'm not going to try and do good things. But God says, as my child, I command you to be the salt of the earth. And that means to preserve and to add value to the people around you. And so that second point there says that salt prevents corruption from getting worse. Salt prevents corruption from getting worse. 
It helps our world be healthy. Us being good examples and us bringing value and preserving our world helps things from getting worse, helps corruption from getting worse. And the second one that we're going to look at is light. And I want to read that verse again. If you're still in Matthew, I want you to read it with me. It says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So light, we all know what that does, right? Makes things bright so we can see. Um, When I'm driving home at night, I'm terrible with directions. I get lost all the time. But because I have headlights, I can see where I'm going. If I did not have headlights, I would probably never make it home, ever. Okay? And so I use my headlights every night when I'm driving home so that I can make sure I find my way home and I don't get lost. And God says, I want you guys to be the light. And I want it to be bright so that everyone can see. Because God says, I want people to look at you and I want them to be able to come to me through you. I want them to see the light that you're putting out and that will guide them home. And that's the third point there is that... um, Light brings, light guides the lost home. It guides the lost home. And God is our home, and God is where we find comfort, and it's where we find peace, and it's where we find all those things that are good. And God says, I want you to be living a life that is a light to other people so that they will see you and they will wonder what's different about you and how can they get where you are and how can they find the God that you serve. And we do that by being kind to people at school when other people aren't being nice to them. We do that by not gossiping. We do that by not cussing when all of our friends are cussing. We do that by sitting with a kid at school who doesn't have any friends. We do that by respecting our parents and being honest with them. We do that by being kind at church and respecting our leaders and respecting our peers. And we show people that we're different. Because when people see that we're different, they're going to look at us and go, what's different about them? Why are they like that? How can I be like that? And hopefully, they'll have a desire to come towards Jesus, and they'll have a desire to have what you have. So God asks us to be the salt of the earth. He says, I want you to add value to people's lives, and I want you to preserve the world and everything that is good. And then he says, I want you to be a light. I want you to show people who I am and help them find me, help them find home, help the lost find their home. And so that's why we've named our student leadership team Salt and Light, is because We want you guys to be pursuing that, to be pursuing being the salt of the earth and to be pursuing being the light of the world. And um, at this time, I'm going to talk about our student leadership teams and what those look like. But if that's not something you're interested in or if it's not something you want to do, then just take what I just said and still apply that to your life. Because whether we join a team or not, God asks us, to be the salt and the light of the world. And God commands us to do that. So whether you join a team or not, it's still your responsibility and your obligation to do that. So if you are not interested in salt and light, that's totally fine. But please be respectful as we go through this for the people that are interested in it. Um, So we have a little PowerPoint that we're going to go through. It might be a little boring, but we're going to get through it together. Okay. Um, So you can go ahead and click the first one. What is salt and light? Salt and Light is our high commitment leadership program which helps students serve the Lord by serving others, spending daily time in his word and prayer. So Salt and Light is a program that we have created to where you guys um, will be able to um, spend time in your word every day. You guys will have homework to spend time in your word, um, to read the Bible, to learn about people in the Bible, to learn about life um, situations and stuff like that. Um, So you guys will be spending time every day in your word, um, and it'll help you just be, um, what's the word I'm looking for, committed to that, um, help you have discipline in that area. Um, We will also be having meetings, so you'll have time to um, work with other peers and share about what you're learning and how we're growing. And then also we will be doing some service projects um, and serving our community and our church, stuff like that. Um, The next one is, the 77 requirements to be in salt. That's what it looks like, but it's actually 11. Um, what? There's a special one. Seeker one. I don't even know what it is. Um, all right, number one, you must be a Christian who is living the Christian life desiring to serve God. 
So if you want to join our Salt and Light team, you have to have accepted Christ into your life and are being a Christian um, and are desiring to live a life for God, um, not just someone who's goofing around. So you have to be a Christian living a life desiring to serve God. Number two, you must be teachable, willing to learn and make changes in your own personal life. You need to be able to be confronted and encouraged by God and Christians. So you need to be able to be told that you're doing something wrong or that you have something in your life that is people don't approve of and you need to be able to be um, willing to listen to that and willing to change and willing to be teachable. Um, number three, you must be an example of Christian conduct and character, um, showing respect to authority figures and those around you. Um, if you have a reputation of being a troublemaker, light and salt is probably not for you. So um, we want you guys to be an example, not just here at church and in our salt and light meetings, but also at school, also at home, also at, you guys don't have jobs, but wherever you guys are in life, we want you guys being an example of Christian conduct. So if you're like, oh, I'm a good kid at church, but then when I, I just do whatever I want the rest of the week, um, then maybe salt and light is not the place for you right now. Number four, you must be committed to every salt and light meeting and salt and light work days. So we will have a meeting once a month. It's only one time a month, and it's only like two hours, usually on a Friday night. Um, and you need to be committed to coming to all of those as well as coming to all of our service projects that we'll have. For light, we'll probably have about three during the year, and for salt, there'll probably be about five service projects throughout the year. Some are bigger, some are smaller, um, just depending on what it is. And number five, you must be committed to at least 75% of all junior high programs. So that means you need to be coming on our weekends, you need to be coming to every TNL, you need to be going to camps and um, our big events that we have. We totally understand if you have vacation or if you're sick, like you can miss a TNL, but we want you guys to be someone who's coming regularly um, to TNL weekends, camps, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you can go ahead to the next one. Number six, you will be required to memorize selected verses before each meeting every month. This one's simple. We have memory verses that we will give you at the beginning of every month, and it'll be your job to memorize it and say it back to us at our next meeting. Um, number seven, you will need to maintain daily personal devotional and prayer time with God. So this means that you'll need to spend time with God every single day. And if you're like, that overwhelms me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to learn. We actually give you guys homework that you do every single day. And it's probably about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, not even that big um, of a time. And we like give you the homework so you have something to do and you know exactly what to do and you don't need to feel like you have to figure it out by yourself. Um, number nine, you must be willing to work hard. Like I said, we have service projects um, throughout the year, and we need you guys to be willing to work hard. Um, some of those service projects are more physical. Like I think one of our service projects this year is probably going to be weekend of service, which means we're going to have to be doing some stuff like that. Um, I think it is. I think it's in April. I don't know. But we need you guys to be willing to work hard and at your homework, willing to study and willing to memorize the verses and willing to give it um, the best that you have. Number 10, you must be in 7th grade for light and 8th grade for salt. Um, so if you're in 8th grade, you can join the salt team. 7th grade, you can join the light team, but you can't join the opposite team. Um, 11, or number 11, you will need to turn in an application and be approved by our mid-group director and ex to be accepted to salt and light groups. So we have applications for you. They are over there on the side. If you are a 7th grade girl, your applications are pink. If you're a 7th grade boy, your applications are yellow. And if you are in 8th grade, whether you're a girl or a boy, your application is blue. So we have them all on the side right there. So just pick one up, take it home, and you'll fill it out, and you'll turn it in to your director. Or if you come on the weekend, you can turn it in in our mailbox, and then we'll let you know if we think that you are um, going to make it into Salt and Light. Um, you can go ahead and click it. So what do you do now? Number one, pray about it. I would encourage you guys to take the packet home and just pray about it. Ask God if this is something that is right for you right now. Make sure you have time in your schedule for this. Make sure you're going to be able to follow through with all those commitments and ask God if he thinks this is what's best for you right now. And then take a salt and light packet home and read it all the way through. Read everything it says, all the requirements again. Um, answer all the questions, just take it home. Even if you're like, I don't know if I want to do this, maybe I do, maybe I don't, just take it home 
and just look over it and just um, pray about it. And then go through it with your parents because your parents are going to be the ones that have to drive you to all the meetings, drive you to all the service projects. So let them look at it. Let them see if it's something that you guys want to do as a family and if they're interested in that as well. So, and then fill out an application, turn it in by August 30th. So you guys will need to fill it out completely and turn it in, um, I believe, what day of the, do we know what that is? It's like a, I think it might be a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday? Yeah. So August 30th is a Tuesday night. So at the end of August, just make sure you have that turned in completely. And then in the back, there's a reference form. This reference form you're going to give to someone that is not immediate family and is not a paid staff member at um, here. So if you want to give it to your small group leader, that's fine. But um, Thomas, Taylor, Kevin, me, Scott, Shara, and Travis, you can't give it to us. Um, but you can give it to your small group leader if you want. Um, you cannot give it to your parents or your siblings. Um, you could give it to like an aunt or an uncle or a cousin, or you could give it to a close family friend's mom or dad if they know you well. But they'll fill out this form. You just give it to them, and they need to turn it in by August 30th. If it's not in on time, don't worry about it. That's not your fault. That's whoever's job it is to turn in that reference form. So give it to them. Tell them when it needs to be in. And if it's not in, don't stress. We will work on getting that from them. Um, you can go ahead and click it. Who are we looking for to be in salt and light? We don't want, what does that say? Punks. Punks who want to find a way to be popular and aren't willing to work hard. So if you're like, oh, I'm totally joining salt or light because all the girls will think I'm so cool if I'm like serving God and doing all this stuff. Or all the boys will think I'm like this awesome girl who's learning about God and going to all the service projects. Then salt and light is not for you. If that's why you're joining it or... If you are not willing to work hard and give your full effort, give 100%, then salt and light is not for you. Um, people we do want are dedicated, eager people who are willing to work hard and make a difference in our youth group and community. So we want people who are going to give this 100% and are really going to follow through, do the homework, do the memory verses, be at our service projects, be involved on Tuesday nights and weekends. Um, those are the people that we want in our teams. Um, you can go ahead and click, I think there's one more. Oh, there's not another one? There was one about how long it goes till. I already said that? Oh, I don't remember saying that. All right, well, it goes from September of this year all the way to May of 2017. So it's like throughout the school year. So if you are interested in salt and light, I'm almost done, guys. If you are interested in salt and light, grab a packet. Even if you're like, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, take a packet home, either fill it out or let your parents look at it, pray about it. Hey guys, shh, I'm not done yet. Shh. Take it home and pray and ask God if he thinks this is what is right for you. And then for those of you who decide not to do salt and light, just remember what I said at the beginning, that God commands us to be salt and light whether we join a team or not. Um, so I just encourage you guys in that um, and that's all I have, so I'm going to pray, um, and then Taylor's going to come up to do the lottery. So, bow your heads, close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this time, God, and we thank you um, for just how much you love us, and we thank you for giving us your word so that we can better know how to serve you, and I pray that you would encourage us to be the salt and the light of the earth, God, and I pray that you would um, tug on our hearts. If we are supposed to be joining student leadership, you would let that be known to us. Um, and God, we thank you so much for this time. And you're going to pray. Amen.